welcome back to my witchy channel. And in today's video, I want to do something a little bit different from what I normally do in that I want to talk about witches in media, specifically witches in television and film. So I do want to preface this video by saying that I am not going to be talking about Harry Potter. And the reason for this is because it is way too vast of a universe. I'm not that familiar with it. And in order for me to talk about it, I would have to dissect every female witch character that is in the movie because today's video is going to be coming at the perspective of female witches in media uh, from the perspective of a female. So I will not be delving into that. But with that being said, let's get on into today's video. When you think about witches in media, what are the first TV shows or films that come to mind? If you're from my generation, you're probably going to immediately think of The Craft, Charmed, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and maybe even Buffy the Vampire Slayer because who could forget about Willow? But arguably, witches have been mentioned in media for a very long time. In fact, the first mention of witches, or the first portrayal, I should say, of witches, was likely in the very first documentary ever made in the 1920s, which was a Swedish documentary called Hexen. Hexen explores the history of witchcraft and even Satanism through medieval artwork as well as silent vignettes. The documentary basically showcases what it was like for women who were accused of witchcraft during the witch trials and offers a psychological perspective on the treatment of witches, accusations, as well as beliefs of the past. The documentary is about 1 hour and 44 minutes, I believe, long, and you can actually watch the whole thing on YouTube on a channel that I will put up on the screen as well as I will put a link in the description, and that is a channel called Bloody Cinema USA. Now, of course, I am talking about witches portrayed in film, and I would be remiss to ignore the witches of 1939's The Wizard of Oz. In this film, we see the Bad Witch, the Wicked Witch of the West, who is portrayed with green skin, a long nose, and accompanied by flying monkeys, who gets her comeuppance at the beginning and later on at the end of the film, in juxtaposition to the Good Witch, who is literally Glinda the Good Witch, a woman who is beautiful in visage and who has enough tool in her dress to rival a gypsy bride. This is going to be the first portrayal in media of witches being portrayed as ugly equaling evil and pretty equaling good. And this is something that will come up again and again uh, as we go on through the depictions of witches in media. Fast forward to the 1940s and you have the fun tongue-in-cheek portrayals of witches such as Renee Claire's 1940 film, I Married a Witch. Now this film features Veronica Lake, a very beautiful blonde bombshell actress portraying a witch named Jennifer who was burned at the stake some hundreds of years ago. So 300 years later, she is reawoken and she hatches a plan to use a love spell to make a politician fall in love with her and be her slave, essentially. Uh, now this politician is a descendant of the people who burned her at the stake, but again, this is a very fun, kind of campy movie, um, not serious at all in tone, and uh, they are using the trope of the witch being beautiful and of course using her witchcraft as well as her good looks to kind of uh, get what she wants, but in no way is it really portraying the witch as an evil being. Inspired by Claire's movie in 1964, Saul Sachs created the beloved TV show Bewitched. Now, in this show, there is a witch named Samantha who marries a mortal man named Darren. The premise of the show is that Samantha says that she will not use her magic in everyday life because she, you know, doesn't need to. She's married to a mortal, uh, so she decides to keep it at bay. But uh, as this is another lighthearted portrayal of witchcraft, Essentially, Samantha does end up using her magic and hijinks ensue as it creates all sorts of situations, um, including members of her family who are also magically inclined to getting involved. So again, this is a very lighthearted portrayal of witches, uh, essentially, who, they're beautiful women. Uh, again, the two main characters, the one in I Married a Witch, Jennifer, as well as Samantha, are very beautiful uh, for the time, like the, the peak standard of beauty. Uh, blonde bombshell type women. So we are going with this narrative at this time that these very beautiful women are witches, uh, but they are not inherently evil. So at this point, when we go back to 
the origins of witchcraft and of course the first media representation of witches in Hexen, uh, we seem to be straying from witches being old hags or extremely ugly uh, as a sign that they're witches uh, to witches just being beautiful women who happen to have magical powers. But that is something that shifts later when we get into the 1970s film representations of witches. So, in the 1970s, the portrayal of witches in media kind of shifts a little bit from the lighthearted, campy versions uh, to uh, more serious, darker ones. And if you are a fan of horror, then you are probably familiar with movies such as The Blood on Satan's Claw, as well as Dario Argento's classic Suspiria. Now, in these movies, the notion that witches are beautiful women, often blonde, uh, is still seen uh, in both films. But in this case, they are shown as beautiful women who are absolutely evil. Uh, I did recently watch The Blood on Satan's Claw on Shudder. Not sponsored, but I wish that I was. Um, it was an alright film. It wasn't necessarily my cup of tea, and the main focus was kind of more on evil than witchcraft in general. Uh, but it is worth checking out if you like classic horror movies, and um, yeah, if you just want to watch a movie that happens to be involving witches. Um, it's it's not a bad watch by any means. Suspiria, everybody loves Suspiria, even if it's just from a uh, visual point of view and not even so much story. I know that there has been a remake of Suspiria in recent years. I have not watched it, but I've heard that it is absolutely amazing. But to get back on topic, uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that in the 60s, or sorry, the uh, 40s to the 60s, there was kind of this idea that witches were being portrayed as kind of like a silly trope uh, in a romantic comedy type way, and now in the 1970s we are getting more back to witches being evil. And this trend continues through movies in the 1980s, the 1990s, and we kind of go back and forth with this whole narrative of witches either being ugly and evil, or being beautiful and good, or being beautiful but using that to hide their inherent evil nature. So there are many examples of all these different types of witch tropes in movies in the following decades from the 70s. So we have movies like Hocus Pocus, The Witches of Eastwick, Practical Magic, or The Witches is another amazing film uh, based off of the book by Roald Dahl. Uh, that is an amazing movie where, um, again, it seems to me that in a lot more uh, movies that are aimed at children that they're showing the witches as being these ugly people or hiding their ugly uh, interior behind this this fake um, attractive appearance and uh, in the other movies such as uh, you know like Practical Magic and the Witches of Eastwick uh, there are conventionally attractive women who happen to be witches and whether or not they use their powers for good or bad is kind of something that drives the story or kind of brings about a lesson in the movies. Um, and I'm going to detract for just a moment to talk about um, ancient folklore and history regarding uh, witches and magical beings and things like that. So I think that a lot of folklore and the representation of witches or magical beings in folklore ties into the tropes that we're seeing in the movies, specifically that um, witches are either inherently ugly and evil or that they're able to hide their true nature by putting on this this facade of being like a beautiful woman. So I would think that uh, one of the better examples of that that I can think of is the Slavic Baba Yaga. So if you're not aware, Baba Yaga is kind of an old hag who lives in the woods. She lives in a house that is constantly rotating and is on giant chicken feet, and she rides around in a mortar and pestle, which is pretty fucking metal, if you ask me. Um, Baba Yaga is pretty fucking cool. Um, but my point uh, with this is that Baba Yaga in different stories is represented uh, two totally different ways. So there are stories where she eats children, and if you come across her hut in the woods, uh, she will probably kill you just because you've disturbed her. And there are other stories in which she helps people find their way. Uh, she can help guide people who are lost, and it just kind of depends on not even so much just the interaction with the person and her, it's, it's just totally different uh, folklore of her seem to portray her in either light. And along the same lines of that is the Celtic deity, the Kaliach, and the Kaliach is either an evil, ugly kind of woman, uh, often a giantess, but, but usually fairly unattractive looking. 
Um, and she's found in the wilderness, and again, um, people stumbled into her home in a bunch of different lore, and she has killed them simply for being there, or she has killed people for other various reasons. So there is also a story of the Kaliach, where a bunch of boys stumble into her home, and, you know, she, she looks as she does, a fairly unattractive, haggard type of woman in the woods, and when the one boy agrees to sleep with her, she transforms, or is it sleep with her or kiss her? I'm not sure. But somebody is nice to her, essentially, and she transforms into a beautiful woman. So going back, you know, as far back as this hundreds and hundreds of year old folklore, these women are portrayed as either ugly hags who live in the woods who are evil, or ugly hags with the uh, propensity to be evil, but who can also be good uh, but are also, they're capable of camouflaging themselves as beautiful women, uh, which can lead into an even bigger discussion on the portrayal of women through storytelling and through media, etc. Um, basically, the way that I see it is it's kind of a Pandora's box situation. Uh, so, whichever way you look at it, essentially, they are saying either women are inherently evil or women who don't look like they would be evil, are capable of evil, and they just kind of hide that behind a visage. But either way you look at it, it's kind of a lose-lose situation, uh, in my opinion. I could probably go on about the psychology behind that for a lot longer, but this video would be way too long if I kind of went in on that, and I did touch upon points such as that in my Lilith video, uh, in terms of the whole portrayal of women, or kind of women being innately evil and things like that, so... Back to the topic of media, uh, so I don't get too distracted, I have a couple of more points that I want to make, and then that will be it for today. We're currently seeing another renaissance of witches on television and in film, as we did in the 90s. Now, in the 90s, there was this huge boom of witch-centric content on TV and in films. So, uh, some of the primetime hours of TV were taken up by shows like uh, Charmed, again, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and even The Worst Witch, which is one of my favorite shows growing up as a child. Uh, it's about a British boarding school for witches, and they go there and just kind of try to learn how to use their magic, and of course it features Mildred Hubble, who is the worst witch. Uh, before this, though, came the movie The Worst Witch, which starred Feruza Balk, who you might know from The Craft, and she plays Mildred Hubble in this film, I'm very sad to say I have not watched the movie version of The Worst Witch. I had the books as a child, and I did watch the TV series, but I have to watch the movie because I love Feruza Balk. I have signed the craft still over on my wall from Feruza Balk. Like, I'm obsessed. Um, so yeah, obviously, as a child, I was very influenced by these shows. Uh, as a kid, these shows did actually influence me to want to get into witchcraft, um, but again, that's something that I can touch upon in another video, perhaps, because that is not the focus of today's video. Uh, but yes, in the 90s and the early 2000s, there were definitely a lot of witch-related TV shows and movies and things like that in all around us. Um, I guess I could notably mention The Blair Witch Project, but that is a found footage movie, and even though the story turned into it being about a witch who lived in the woods, the majority of the movie is just kind of focused on these kids being lost in the woods, and, you know, so... I don't know, it is one of my favorite movies, but it, in terms of movies about witches, it's... it's There's more lore if you are into, like, the fandom of the Blair Witch, and you read all of, like, the DVD inserts, and the, there's, like, a Wikipedia and stuff like that, but it is less about witches and more about people being lost in the woods with cameras shoved up their snotty noses for a really long time. Um, so currently, uh, and I haven't watched... I've tried to watch one of these shows, but currently there has been a revival of the TV series Charmed, which I have not watched, and I actually wasn't very much into Charmed when I was younger, even though I love Rose McGowan, or did love Rose McGowan at one point in my life. Um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch has made a comeback as well, but it has been rebranded as The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I did try. I tried to watch this series. I probably got five episodes in some years back. I think it started like three years ago now or something like that. And I can't get on board with it. I, I was on board with the idea that they were turning this beloved original series of Sabrina into something a little darker and, you know, involving kind of demonic entities and, and people using magic for evil and things like that, but I just... 
it's like it's a CW show kind of like Riverdale and I just really can't get into it but I know a lot of people love it so like no hate if you love The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina it's just not for me uh, but yes so we are seeing that revival and it's interesting because in the 90s we still did have that that relationship of witches being able to use their magic for good and bad but Sabrina was more along the lines of the beloved bewitched in that it was very lighthearted and kind of campy. There was a talking cat, Salem, uh, you know, uh, and in the new version, it is a lot more dark. It's, it's, they've gone down a different route with it. Uh, so it's interesting to see the, the change in the writing from the original to the, the current show. But again, it's not something that I watch, so I can't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't elucidate? Is that the word I'm looking for? I can't really talk that much about that show because I haven't seen it as I have not seen Charmed. And along the same lines as those in the film world, there has been a remake. I, it's not, I guess it's a sequel. They remade The Craft. I refuse to watch it. I'm sorry. I, people were probably going to say you can't judge something without seeing it, but the Craft, the original movie, was such a big thing for me growing up that I absolutely refused to watch this remake. I know Feruza Balk is in it, but she has a non-speaking role like right at the end of the movie, so it's not even worth it. I've seen the clip. I've seen the clip. Uh, so I'm not sure what they did with that. Uh, the original Craft was actually fairly dark in a lot of ways, um, but I'm not sure what they've done with this, with this new one because I haven't seen it. But so we are seeing this kind of resurgence of witchcraft in in TV and movies and things like that. Um, it's never really disappeared from movies ever since it started being mentioned. Um, there's obviously uh, The Witch, which was a, a very renowned movie from the last couple of years. I love The Witch. Uh, a lot of people don't find it scary. And I don't know if the nuance of the time period it's set in is lost on them or they just, just don't like it. In fact, one of my favorite movies about witches is The Crucible, which is an entirely boring movie. It basically follows the story of the main players in the Salem Witch Trial and it is, I think, fairly historically accurate. It's been a while since I've watched it, but it is a boring movie. A good movie, but a boring movie. Uh, so, and I'm getting a little bit off topic just talking about various things. Um, in the current climate of witches on TV and film, we are seeing what we kind of did in the 90s, which is um, generally conventionally attractive women who happen to have magical powers. In a lot of cases in these TV series, uh, the magic that these witches are using uh, creates a negative situation or it's meant to teach a lesson, but the overarching theme seems to be that magic can be useful, but in a lot of cases should probably be avoided if possible. Now, of course, magic as seen in the media does not portray magic experienced by magical practitioners in everyday life and thus does not portray a realistic worldview of how women and witches in particular uh, go about things in their magical practice. But if I wanted to ruminate on that, it would be a much longer video. So with that being said, I hope that you did enjoy today's video. It was just kind of meant to be a little focus on different movies and TV shows that portray witches, especially women witches, uh, and what you can kind of take away from that. Um, it is interesting to me that there is a long-standing theme of either women being beautiful and good or being ugly and bad. Uh, that is something to unpack, definitely. I like looking at media from a critical as well as a psychological point of view, especially when a lot of it is written by males. Uh, so that is very interesting to me. But with all of that being said, what is your favorite witchy movie or TV series? And who is your favorite witchy character? If it's a series like Sabrina where there are multiple witches and why? If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, we don't talk about that on my channel. Uh, I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. If you want to become a member of my witchy family, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Have a blessed day. It's really hot in here. I'm going to love this. I just don't want to look fucking orange. Which I looked a little bit orange. And then we should start to see this come out. Do we like my outfit today? I thrifted this top like two weeks ago, I want to say. Just wearing it with a cute little 
Amazon waist cincher. My floor is really queaky. Queaky. My floor is really queaky. Um, one of my favorite movies actually. Son of a bitch! <laughs>